back to another episode of No Time To Be Hungry. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make one of my wife's favorite things on the planet, and that's cinnamon raisin bread. Real easy to make. I think right now is probably a good time to learn this uh, technique, because making bread takes a little bit of practice, but once you get used to it, I think the first time I think it took me about 10 tries to actually make something that resembled bread. <laughs> but anyway, it's a it's an awesome snack and uh, it's really easy to make. Let's see what's uh, in the ingredients. Well, here is our ingredients. We're gonna start out with, yeah, that's a bottle of rum. You can use your whatever favorite rum you want or no rum at all, whatever, it's your choice. It's your creation. We've got some raisins. You can use any kind of raisins you want to, but this is what I have. We have a mixture of cinnamon and sugar. This is about a quarter cup. This is a tablespoon of yeast, one egg, a th three quarter cup, of warm milk, some about a half a cup of melted butter, and another, this right here is a third cup of sugar with a mixture of cinnamon. And a little bit of salt. Of course, you need some bread flour as well. The very first thing you wanna do is make sure that your yeast is still good. So we're gonna take our quarter, and this needs to be like warm to touch milk because this is what we need to add to make sure our yeast is good so we're gonna pour that in there a little let's put a little bit of sugar in there just to feed the yeast we're gonna let that sit there for probably about two minutes or three minutes until it starts to foam up if it doesn't foam up then you need to go buy some more yeast because your yeast didn't survive Keep your yeast in the refrigerator and it'll last a long time in a sealed container. Let's get our wet ingredient started. I'm gonna put the melted butter and the sugar at the same time to get it all mixed in. This helps melt the sugar down so everything gets well incorporated. Now, like anything, you're going to use a dash of salt. A dash of salt just kind of brings out the flavor. You don't want too much because this is actually sweet bread. That's why we put all that sugar and cinnamon in it. One egg. And we're going to get that all mixed in. Our milk and yeast is ready to go. This is what it's supposed to look like, nice and foamy on the top, and even smells like yeast. So we're just gonna mix this in with the rest of the wet ingredients. Normally this recipe takes about three cups of flour. Sometimes a little under, sometimes a little more. You, you really don't need to worry so much about being precise with the bread. It's all about, of course, making sure you have the basic ingredients, but you really need to judge the, by the texture, by the feel. And if you add too much flour, you can always add a little bit of water, a little bit of milk to make it just, just feel just right. So we want this to be a soft bread. So it's gonna be a little bit tacky. So I'm gonna start putting in, I'm gonna put in about a cup and a half at first of flour, and then I'm gonna stir it in, make sure everything is really well mixed up. And then I'm gonna put it on the mixer and we're gonna start adding some more as we go. I'm really just looking for a specific texture of the dough more than an exact ingredient, if that makes sense. 
I have this. I don't know why I grabbed this. I have a bunch of them. This is a quarter cup. We're going to start out with a cup and a half. <laughs> if I can do this, anybody can do it, I promise you. Mixing our dough. This is what I have here. I don't know. I, I don't have a stand mixer here. This is all I use. You can knead it by hand if you like. Plenty of videos on showing you how to knead bread by hand. But this is what I'm going to use today. So let's get it mixed up. I've already got my one and a half cups mixed in with the wet ingredients. So we'll see if I'm close to the three cups that I need. We'll do like a half a cup at a time, so we don't make too much of a mess. Okay, we'll come back. Because I'm going to have to do this for at least probably a little bit more than 10 minutes. I've just added in my final part of the three cups. So I have three cups of flour in here right now. So let's see, let's see how this uh, turns out. I think it's gonna work out perfect. And it looks like my three cups has just turned out perfect. So I'm gonna use the dough to kind of clean up the bowl. This is exactly what I'm looking for. It's not sticking to my hand. It's a little tacky. And uh, look at that, it smells awesome too. Cinnamon bread, cinnamon raisin bread. The bread actually, a lot of people, a lot of times people just make white bread and then put the cinnamon and raisins on top of the dough. But I like to make my dough my bread to taste like awesome cinnamon sweet bread so we got to let this thing grow so we're going to stick it back in the pot pot back in the bowl we don't want this thing to dry out so you can wipe it down with a little bit of oil if you want to depends on where you live on the planet but because this is thailand and everything is super hot and humid. Things don't dry out here. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my hotel shower cap and fit this over the bowl. And we're gonna go put this in a warm spot for maybe, maybe an hour to two hours. You don't want it to go too much. It tends to get too aerated and difficult to manage. So. You really just want to get it to double in size. So well, let's wait about an hour, hour and a half, and see uh, see what it looks like. Okay, now for the special ingredient, sang som. What we're going to do with the sang som is we're going to make the raisins taste extra alloy. <laughs> you don't have to do this, especially if you have young children eating this. However, it might be good for some uh, teething. Anyway, let's put a little bit of sugar and rum on top of the raisins and we're going to let this thing sit while our dough is rising and, and let it kind of soak into the raisin. There's not really a special technique to this, okay? Just pour as much as you want in there so it can soak in. We're gonna put a little bit of the cinnamon. We're gonna use some of this a little bit later.
Really, the longer you can let this stuff soak, the better it's gonna be. So if you wanna let this thing soak overnight, that way you get all of the uh, the rum inside the, the raisins. Of course, it'll be aloequa, tasty, much tastier. Okay. All right, we're gonna let all that stuff sit for about an hour and a half and we'll come right back. It's been a couple of hours now since I've put it since I, since I covered it up and put it outside in the shop so it could get nice and warm. Because we had lunch time, I forgot. We had to go eat lunch. So we're back now and let's check out the dough. What do you think about that? That thing grows quite a bit. Any, anything more than you know three hours, I think of. If you live in a place where it's cold, then you may want to put it in your oven. And I'll show you that technique here in a second. I've showed it on other videos, how to get it to rise without having to, you're gonna have to make whatever your bread or your buns or whatever you're making, it's gonna have to go through a second rise process. So instead of covering it up and taking the chance of deflating it when you remove the cover, I'll show you a better technique. And this works really good if it's cold where you're at. Bam. And green. Okay, you want to pop it? Go ahead. It's Paige's favorite part. Other than eating it. Well, now we need a couple more ingredients. We need a little bit more melted butter. We have our sugar and cinnamon mixture here. And we need to dust the countertop. I did clean the countertop. Actually, Paige did clean it really well and we're going to roll out our dough in a couple of pieces this is a this recipe is good for about two loaves of bread so i want to split this in half I don't know, this might be the easiest way to do this. I have a little cutter, but there. Now what I want to do is I want to actually make this into a, a, a rectangle. larger rolling pin but I kind of like this one. <laughs> hey just tasting the raisins. How are they? <laughs> okay let me get this into a rectangle. Well there we go. It's a little difficult because it wants to go back into a shape of a ball because our dough is awesome. I'm going to brush some of this melted butter on the surface because butter is awesome and it also helps make the sugar stick other than tasting awesome. I'm going to sprinkle this on. I did wash my hands. generous about it. I'm gonna make a mess too. It's okay. It's what cooking's all about. Alright, now for the raisins. You don't have to put this many on there, <laughs> but Paige really likes raisins. Don't put any on the top there. What we want to do is when we fold it, a lot of times when it rises, the to come up through the top, so I want to leave this like that. And then I'm just going to roll it into a shape of a loaf of bread.
Okay. I'm going to pinch this together. So that it doesn't come apart. And we want to get the we want to get all the folds all together somehow. Got to keep working it. Okay, you could dust your pan if you want to with flour, but I just use some parchment paper. I know it doesn't look beautiful, it works. This isn't a video on how to put parchment paper in a bread pan. Try to get the fold as best as you can on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Bread doesn't always have to look so perfectly beautiful as long as it tastes good. I'm a little worried about that when it rises, but we'll see. It might be okay. Let's put that in the oven. The oven's not hot. The oven's where we're going to have the second part of the rise. Okay, I don't want this to dry out in the oven because if it dries, it's not going to rise again. So I'm gonna put a little bit more butter on top because butter's awesome. And I'm gonna put some on the other one too. Now we're gonna take a coffee cup and some hot water. And we're gonna put it in the oven. Now this is gonna make sure it stays nice and moist in our oven and also a little bit of heat from the hot water. It'll steam up a little bit. We'll give this about maybe 30, 45 minutes and then we'll check on it. Okay, it's been about an hour now. Let's see if it's risen, about 45 minutes. Bam, look at that. Well, isn't that special? That one looks pretty good right there. <laughs> and it'll actually grow a little bit more once we fire up the oven. This one's got an odd shape. I think it's gonna be a little deformed <laughs> whenever it starts to puff up some more. I think for whatever reason, I didn't get the fold on the bottom or it kind of flipped a little bit. I'm not sure, but Anyway, it happens. Good quality bread never looks perfect. Remember that. <laughs> okay, I've preheated my oven. I'm gonna put it at about 120 degrees Celsius. We're gonna bake it for about 40, 45 minutes. I'm gonna check it in about 30. And we're gonna put both of these in there at the same time. Okay, bro. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna spend these next 40, 45 minutes on the elliptical exercising. Yeah. finished this one actually didn't turn out too bad little i thought it was kind of going to be a little deformed 
But uh, this one turned out perfect looking. You have to remember this, it's very important. The whole house smells extraordinary right now, like cinnamon, raisin, bread, heaven. <laughs> Don't touch the bread. Don't cut the bread. Don't even look at the bread until the bread cools off. Because if you cut into it, it won't be as soft. It'll be good, unless you're gonna eat the whole thing right now, which is possible. <laughs> With some, with some melted butter. Wow, it could probably be finished quick. But anyway, let's let it cool off completely and then we'll cut into it. If I can keep Paige out of the kitchen. Hmm. Let's cut into this bad boy. We'll cut into the not so beautiful one first. Parchment paper worked out pretty good. Pretty good. Bottom got cooked nice. Nice loaf of bread. Yay. Okay, for me, for me, for me, the best way to cut bread is with an electric knife. I know somebody's gonna say, no, Chuck, you can't cut, can't cut bread like that. I have a lot of different techniques for cutting stuff. I have a, I have a bread cutting knife. Anyway, mm -hmm. I can cut it a little bit thinner and perfect slice with the electric knife. What do you got? Powder? You got baking powder on your face? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cooling powder. Look at that, huh? Let's give it a try. You want to try the first piece? Okay, let's give it a try. Good. <laughs> Okay, cinnamon raisin bread. Mm. It's still warm. The raisins taste fantastic. Mm. It's gonna be good in the morning with coffee. A little bit of butter or cream cheese. Mm. <laughs> mm. I hope you liked today's episode of No Time To Be Hungry. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Click the little hamburger icon down there to subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Mm.